Missing link. Next question came from my guy George. He said, "What's up, Engraving the team? Keep it clean, fam. I hope you and your family are doing well. Hey, I appreciate it, George." He said, "So after the heartbreaking loss to the Chiefs, I believe it showcases a huge need, a huge need for the Ravens organization. You may have never heard this before, but the Ravens need a wide receiver. <laughs> LOL. I know you and I have agreed a lot on the wide out position. Zay is going to be a playmaker, and I still have faith in Bateman through this upcoming year will determine his future with the franchise. I know that you wanted D Hop last season, as I did too. Uh, with Zay being here for the foreseeable future and Bate with us for another year." Let's say we re-sign Aguilar to a modest extension as a depth piece and go and get that big body receiver in free agency and sign Mike Evans. We are going to need a running back as well. But imagine lining up with Andrews and likely at tight end with Zay Flowers, uh, Mike Evans, Bateman, and Aguilar, and Evans replacing Odell Beckham Jr. That will give us an option we don't have on the boundaries. I know pursuing a wide receiver in the offseason would be a new concept for this organization, LOL. But I believe we will finally get it right. And then we will have the best receiving court this franchise has ever seen. Get a tackle early in the draft. Another running back to pair with Keaton in a corner in the mid rounds. And I believe we will have an AFC championship rematch next year versus the Chiefs. Sorry for the Ravens need a wide receiver question. But what seems ongoing for a decade now, but I truly believe he would put us over the top. Oh, man. Mike Evans would. That would be amazing. Because Mike Evans is. Yeah, he's, he's like that. Um, Now. <laughs> With his uh, thousand yards being jeopardy, being with the Baltimore Ravens, I uh, no, I think he could get it. Um, he's somebody that's worked with uh, uh, Todd Munkin before. Couldn't remember offensive coordinator's name for a second. Um, but he's somebody that's worked with him before, so there's that familiarity. Um, and Mike Evans just productive, straight up. He's a producer. He makes plays, makes catches, gets yak, gets yak in a different way. Not to say Flowers kind of yak. I mean, okay, really, who who gets it like that, really? Maybe a, not even Tyreek. Tyreek Hill does the same thing, but this is in a different way. Tyreek Hill uses more speed. Uh, agility's there too, for sure. But Tyreek Hill uses more speed. Zay Flowers like that. Agility is crazy. It's like through the roof. But anyway, um, Mike Evans would be amazing because if you have, and, and with all the guys that you mentioned too, with Mike Evans and a Zay Flowers and a Rashad Bateman and still Nelson Aguilar and still likely you got Mark Andrews too in the running back. So yeah. Mike Evans would do great for the Baltimore Ravens. He would be a great piece for the Baltimore Ravens, and he would just he would make them that much more powerful. New Year, same problem. Next question came from my guy, uh, Evan. He said, hey, Graven, I hope you and the family are well amidst this day, but here's my thoughts. There's a lot that goes into the loss against the Kansas City Chiefs. Number one, there were lack of calls on KC's side. That could have been taunting from them and maybe two PIs that should have went our way. Number two, there were a lot of fair calls where we showed a lack of discipline, all the roughing calls, unnecessary roughness, etc. Uh, number three, there were a lot of mistakes with our turnovers. He was very upset because in that part of the question he did not keep it clean come on now man anyway number four bad offensive play calling is what killed us number one rushing offense against the bottom 16 rushing defense and only eight running calls played uh and only eight running plays called excuse me biggest takeaway this game was very much given to the chiefs we threw it's just like with peak brady era we know they're going to get calls their way but we have to stay disciplined and true to our game can't set up a defense without setting up the run which we've had ample opportunity to but nope bad play calling and lack of discipline lost this for us yeah Made it easy for the Chiefs. We beat ourselves that game by not utilizing the run game in which we had a very clear advantage in. Love my Ravens. Love Team Keep It Clean, but we got to be consistent with our strengths. Can't play the way the media wants us to. We have to play our game. Shout out to Nyan the Great. And yeah, Ravens didn't play their game, and they got beat bad. Was everybody right about Lamar? Next question came from my guy Jair. Is this Jair Alexander? Could it be? Anyway, he said, I engraven hope you're doing well after this heartbreaking loss. I'm questioning if everyone was right about Lamar Jackson after this game. I'm puzzled by the repeated playoff struggles, especially when comparing to Mahomes, Allen, and Burrow's amazing and sustained performances in the postseason. I know it's not solely Lamar's fault, but I can't grasp why he faces pressure differently. Is it coaching, play calling, or the need for perfection? We had better weapons than the Chiefs offensively and still lost. The playoff losses feel frustratingly similar each time. Time, making me wonder if Lamar can't progress like his peers. I'm lost. Is it Lamar, coaching, or organizational factors? Uh, the uncertainty is getting to me. I'm starting to believe the doubts about Lamar might be valid. The losses feel the same, and I can't pinpoint the common denominator. What do you think it is, Lamar, coaching, Hobbs, or culture? I think it is a mix of all of it. All have certainly had their struggles uh, in the playoffs, but in my opinion, I think it starts at the top. Who are your leaders on this team? Who runs this team? If I ask you the question, who runs this team? Who runs the Baltimore Ravens? Would you say it's a player or would you say it's a coach? I'm assuming 
just assuming that your answer would be a coach and that answer would be uh, Jonathan Harbaugh. Um, and if that is your answer, then I would think somebody who runs the show, somebody who calls the shots, somebody who makes the decisions, uh, they would realize and recognize what's going on and what's not going on, what's working and what's not working. And they would address it right then and there, especially come playoff time. Now, I know. John likes to let his coordinators coordinate, and I get that. But sometimes, if you let him, if you don't want to be a micromanager, that's cool. But you still got to step in at times. Um, and then with Lamar Jackson, uh, Lamar Jackson, he got to make some better decisions uh, in playoff times. Uh, if you're talking about how some of the playoff games are eerily similar, you think about the Bills game from 2020. Uh, you think about the the pick six uh, that was thrown uh, right because they they called the same play two times in a row. Uh, on the previous play, I think either Hollywood Hollywood was open, I think, or Mark Andrews, or one of them two was open. Uh, but Lamar got pressured and then threw it late in completion. They ran the same exact play back to back. Uh, then he threw the pick six, um, and then and that hey, that's that's points right there. That's that literally takes the minimum of three points away. And of course, it could have been seven, but it changes it into zero. And it actually is a seven point swing because it's a pick six because they, they scored a touchdown off of it. And then you think about that Isaiah Likely, uh, the interception with that one. Um, it, it, while it should have been pass interference, it should have been. Uh, it was not a uh, good decision. Uh, he threw it into one, two, triple coverage uh, on that one. So that's the part that's on uh, Lamar Jackson. Um, and when you talk about coaching, I mean, we talked about that already. Culture, um, it's weird because the Baltimore Ravens culture, it is it is, and has been based off of defense. Uh, it's, it's obviously been a lot of offense now recently too, especially under Lamar Jackson, but their culture is also running the ball. It's running the ball. So the Ravens, they didn't even use their culture in the playoff game. Next question came from Brandon. He said, I know there's a lot of people been saying Lamar is not capable of winning a playoff game or anything. Do you think this is true? No, he, he literally won a playoff game this year. He literally did. So, I mean, that X is that out already. He's won a playoff game before. He's, he's won one, another one this year. So, no, that's of course that's not true. And some people within my family state that. Also, how do you believe 2025 will go for the Baltimore Ravens? Oh, you're already thinking two years ahead. We got to get to 2024 first. Well, you already think, it, but I'm sure you meant the 2024 season. Um, he said, will we come out on top next season? What are your thoughts there? I would hope so, but it's going to be one of those things where seeing is believing. Um, I, I'm, I'm with a lot of Ravens fans how uh, we just, we're not, right? Well, you know what? I, can't, I won't speak for nobody else. Me right now, I'm not the most confident in the Baltimore Ravens moving forward. Um, I would love if they won a Super Bowl, of course, but... My confidence for them, especially playoff time, especially in tough games, especially against the Chiefs, um, my confidence for them is not through the roof right now um, because of what we've continued to see. Um, it, it's very hard to be confident in the Baltimore Ravens moving forward because of everything. So um, if they change stuff, like in regular season, we could see them make adjustments. We saw, we saw it this year. We saw them make adjustments. We saw them not give up leads. We saw them fix stuff. We saw them go through all these positive changes in the regular season this year. Oh, yeah, let's go. Then even in the playoffs, that first game was like, oh, yeah, they continue to do it. But then against the Chiefs, against Patrick Mahomes, against Andy Reid, yeah, they did that. They did the exact opposite of everything that worked. They did the exact opposite of everything. So, um, And it was frustrating. It, it, it was frustrating to watch. It was frustrating to sit there and sit through that. Um, So... I would, I would hope they come out on top, but my confidence ain't through the roof right now. Next question came from Sebastian. He said, 2023 playoffs, RB1, J.K. Dobbins. Let out his frustrations of not getting the ball more in a run first offense versus the Bengals. 2024 playoffs, different offensive coordinator, six carries for the running backs versus a D-line with a hobble Chris Jones and no Willie Gay. Oh, I forgot that Willie Gay was out too. Oh, man. It's, uh, he said after they just ran, uh, uh, after they just got ran over for over 200 yards the previous week. This isn't an offensive coordinator problem. This is a hardball problem. I'm sick of hearing, yeah, we could have done this, that, every loss. You are the head coach. If Steve Bashotti can't do the move because he's buddy-buddy with him, then we, at the end of the ball, will just have to watch years of regular season success and wait for the inevitable coaching collapse in the playoffs. See, that's, that's what I was saying, too. Um, it's, again, regular season, is we're not, fit, we're not scared of that. We're not worried about that. Regular season, we're like, oh, yeah, regular season, we, we got that. We straight. It's, it's the playoffs, man. Playoffs, it just 
Because, again, we could have the nicest teams like we had this year. Got the nicest squad, got health on our side, and then they go out and do that. If they go out and do that with a great team, how can we really have confidence that things won't be things won't be different or things will be different moving forward? It's, it's really hard, too, man. It really is. Oh, and to tag along with the previous question, this was obviously sent before this move was official. He said, P.S. promote Mike Mack to head coach. He actually has a brain. Zero points allowed in the second half against Mahomes. Sheesh. And then he said, also, playoff Kyle Hamilton is slowly reaching playoff Ed Reed status. Kyle Hamilton is just amazing. <laughs> he just, he's amazing at everything. He's just like, I can't call him a perfect player because, like, he'll have his hiccups because he gave up that touchdown to Travis Kelsey, even though, like, Mahomes put that in a perfect spot, man, because Kyle Hamilton was all over Travis Kelsey. But when Mahomes put it, only Kelsey could get, oh, I was like, oh, man. That was like, I couldn't even be mad at Kyle Hamilton for that one. Because, again, he was all over Travis Kelsey, but, but Patrick Mahomes put it perfectly. Uh, then he said, also, it looks like our overconfident rookie got humbled. Yikes. I mean, he yeah, just tried to make a play. Got the ball knocked out. And that was that. Next question came from my guy, Jack. He said, do you think we should trade? Come on now, man. What are we doing? What are we doing? He said, do you think we should trade Lamar to a bad team and draft a rookie quarterback? No. Wow, wow. Come on now. We not we not going back to these. We're not doing this. What are we? Let's continue though. He said the reason I say this is because Lamar has had so many chances to win it all. In 20, 2019, blew it. 2020 to 2022 seasons, taking uneasy hits, and this year he was finally healthy again and blew it. I am done with Lamar. I think we have got to keep him at a and coordinators at all costs. In addition, we will probably lose so many pending free agents. So I honestly think, depending on who we lose, we need to draft and sign the wide receivers, O line, secondary, D line, edge rushers, as well as running backs. Anyway, I think the blame pie starts with Lamar. Zay Flowers, Todd Munkin, John Harbaugh, and then the defense. To add on, this was probably the easiest chance to win it all. Obviously, winning it all is never easy, but so many teams and quarterbacks were having up and down seasons. Next year, so many teams are going to be better. We will have a harder schedule. Anyway, sorry for the long question. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. And no, no. Trey Lamar Jackson, no. Just sign him to a big deal, no. He has been the um, most amazing quarterback in Ravens history. No. And again, that's not a shot at Joe Flacco. I know somebody going say, oh, that's a shot at Joe Flacco. It's not a shot at Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco is obviously the most accomplished Baltimore Ravens quarterback in Ravens history. Uh, well, with the Super Bowl. Uh, he's the most, he, no, he has the most playoff accomplishments. I got to say that. Because Lamar, individual accomplishments, uh, as far as the two MVPs and all them million records. But Flacco... Playoff accomplishments Because all them playoff wins Super Bowl And Super Bowl MVP too So It's nice that our, our Most recent two Quarterbacks they, They've done their thing Now we're waiting for Lamar To just Get over that playoff hump But By trading him No I, I don't think that would be A good idea for the Baltimore Ravens At all At all um, For them to start from scratch uh, I, I just do not think It would be A wise move